Fight! Alright, listen up you. The following video contains offensive material. If you are offended, I apologize. If you ain't offended, you're a terrible person. If you're the type that's easily offended, switch off now. Otherwise, cheers. War. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Or is it? We can all agree that war is one of the worst scourges on our planet, but war has also been the setting for much of our entertainment, from movies to books to toys to, naturally, video games. Game after game after game. But not all video games based on war are grim and grievous and rehash the same thing over and over again. Some of them take a more bright and bizarre approach to war. That's where Hogs of War trots in. That's right, not Call of Duty or Medal of Honor or God of War, Hogs of War. When you think of war games, the first thing that probably comes to mind is first-person shooters. Not so in Hogs of War. This is a turn-based tactics game along the lines of Worms, though I much prefer this game to any of the Worms games, and Worms 3D especially, but I'll dig up Worms again later. You might be surprised to see me, Mr. I don't play anything but platformers and actiony games Eric Goemon 047 let's get put at the third, or whatever it is I'm going by nowadays, and admittedly, I'm usually not into turn-based games, especially when I discovered this game back in the year 2000 when it first came out. In fact, at the time, I was pretty snobby and pig-headed about which games I played, and I was very much in a if it don't come from Japan, then I don't want to play it, man, kind of mindset. Since then, I've become much more open-minded about games in general, but Eric Circa 2000 wasn't having it. At the time, I worked at a used game store, and the day Hogs of War came out, I played it really quickly with my manager before we turned it into a rental. At first, I totally turned my snout up at it, but the more I played it, the more fun and addictive it became. My reputation for being a Japan addict was well known by my coworkers, and I wasn't willing to admit it at the time, but I thought the game was really fun, and when I rented it on the down low, I was tickled pink. Now, I mentioned that this game wasn't made in Japan, and while you might next think that this makes it an American game, this game was actually created across the pond in the UK by Infogram Studios Sheffield House, and that's an important distinction to make, since this game uses distinctly British humor. A lot of the British flavor comes from the brilliant voiceover work of the late British comedian Rick Mayle, probably best known in the US for the role of Drop Dead Fred in the movie of the same name. He's a real ham. His hilarious antics and loads of British humor are sure to keep you dead chuffed throughout the game. So as I was saying, <coughs> as I was saying, the game is really funny and charming and the story is no different. The plot is, it's basically World War I all over again, and the world's powers represented by the UK, the US, France, Germany, Russia, and Japan are all greedy as pigs to take over the hog-shaped Sostralasia and control the Isle of Swill, which is of course rich in swill. Swill is basically like the enigmatic unobtainium, aka oil. The story and some other funny bits are played out in cutscenes between dominating countries. They're entertaining and provide a nice brief distraction from the mayhem. So that's it. Choose your country, go the whole hog, make the other pork loins bleed like stuck pigs, and you can hog all the swill for you and your countrymen to pig out on. As for the teams, they're about as stereotyped as they could possibly be, and I mean to an offensive degree. But every represented country gets theirs, so it's all fair and in good fun. Disclaimer! Please keep in mind, let's get us against stereotyping and bigotry of any kind as merely presenting the game content as it is. Besides, it's just a video game, so... Relax! The UK is represented by the grim and geese to prim and proper Tommy's Trotters, who are, well... Super British, for lack of a better term. This is my land! France is represented by the Garlic Grunts, the snoutiest, er, I mean snootiest in the game. Ooh, Rufla! It is France for goodbye, you idiot! And of course, ironically drop lines like, that about this one. The US is represented by Uncle Ham's Hogs, which consists of Southern Slack Jaws. My daddy taught me how to shoot critters like you real good! Effeminate boys. Mm, the tragic waste of young pigs. Are you in love, Private? Then don't look at me or give me nightmares! And of course, the most American person to ever grace Graceland, the king. Oh, you suck, boy. Russia is represented by Piggy Stroika, a team of vodka drunkinskis who basically talk about drinking alcohol. Oh, no time for a quick drink. Being hard. I must break you and drinking hard alcohol. I would rather drink than shoot. Germany is represented by sauerkrauts, 
who are portrayed as the Nazis. Where are your papers? Yikes. <laughs> Finally, my people, the Japanese, are represented by the embodiment of Asian stereotypes and probably got it worse than any other team, complete with terrible pronunciation of English. Okay, I take very steady aim and fire! And Japanese. They are Sushi Sensei. <laughs> They are also characterized by a number of other incorrect Asian stereotypes linking them to Chinese things like feng shui and kung fu. This game isn't just retro, it's regressive. Retrogressive. Hurrah! Racism, the other white meat. I mean, it's only vaguely racist and stereotypical humor. Oh my. Did they call the Japanese sushi swine? Well, that's as plain as a pig on a sofa. Okay, let's go for something a little less obvious. There, that's better. Before the game proper starts, you have the option of doing a training mission, which is a good idea if you've never played the game before. He fight mods. <laughs> but luckily you can skip it if you know what you're doing. Oh, I may miss. You can use either the D-pad or analog sticks to move your player, and the game is also vibration compatible, which comes in handy when you aren't sure whether or not your players have been hit in the chaos and carne adobada. The controls are a bit loose and wobbly, which makes you as clumsy as a hog on ice. Traversing volatile areas like a minefield is very hazardous, so you have to take extra care while charging around or you'll make a right pig's ear out of the situation. You can also hop, which normally isn't that useful for turn-based games, but it allows you to avoid or minimize damage caused by water, mines, or other environmental hazards as you position your teammates. You're also capable of entering vehicles that can give you the upper hoof in battle, though they are harder to maneuver, or maneuver than your porky pigs. Once you're in position, you'll need to choose from a variety of attacks, weapons, or other items to aid you and your platoon. When you've made your selection, you can take aim in first-person perspective or shoot from the rump. You can also adjust the aim of your weapons using the shoulder buttons, which is absolutely essential for certain equipment. Once you're all node up, it's time to enter the fray. The loading screen between each level gives you a briefing on the mission and also includes important hints and conditions to meet or avoid in order to be successful and maybe pick up some extra slop in the process. It may seem odd to have players take turns in a war game, but the instruction manual explains this away by saying that pigs have a strong sense of fair play, and that war has never been so polite. Now that's clever. Each level begins with your turn, and you're given a brief moment to get your bearings on the law of the land, including enemies and items by examining the on-screen minimap before the clock starts ticking. Each team only has a set period of time in which to take their turn, and the length of the turn varies by level, ranging from 99 seconds to a stingy 15 seconds. As I said before, usually turn-based tactics games like this aren't my favorite because to me, they can be a bit boring, but the pressure of needing to accomplish everything you want to and getting the safety within the time allowed makes me sweat like a pig. Your turn ends when either time runs out, you attack with most weapons, you voluntarily skip your turn, or you injure yourself by running into an explosive. The goal of the game is to wipe out the opposing team on each map before they do the same to you. Usually it's a fair 1 to 1 ratio battle, but as you progress there's too many pigs for the teats, so you'll have to use your power and cunning to tip the scales your way. Even when you're a fair match as far as the number of players is concerned, the enemy usually has the advantage based on the rank of their soldiers. Each little piggy starts as a grunt. Huh, they're called grunts, I, I just got that. Which means they're green or pink, or whatever, they're new, and they don't have much health or weapons to speak of. Luckily for these piglets, they can obtain more health and better weapons through on-site procurement, so they can still end up on the pig's back, but the effect of these items do not last beyond the stage in which they were obtained. Health and item pickups appear on the mini-map as hearts and brown boxes respectively, and soldiers are shown as colored X's that represent their team's uniform color. Of course, the Russians wear red, the French wear sacre bleu, and so on. In addition to the items you can obtain on the battlefield, you can also hog equipment from a fallen enemy or comrade, from a weapons drop, or by destroying a blimp floating overhead. Since grunts can't hack it on the later levels, you'll have to upgrade your troop by obtaining medals that are good for promotion points. Medals can either be earned on the battlefield or after a battle if certain conditions are met, usually the ones outlined during the loading screen. When assigning promotions, you can upgrade your grunts in one of four different classes, heavy gunner, engineer, espionage, or medic. But don't cast your pearls before swine, because once you've picked a career path for your grunt, they will be stuck on that path for the rest of the game or until they die. Each class has its pros and cons, so it's a good idea to have a variety of different classes on your team. Heavy gunners get more powerful weapons, but they're slower. Engineers can use explosives and see hidden explosives, but most of their weapons are short range. Espionage class can hide and steal from other enemies, but their weapons aren't as strong as heavy gunners in general. Medics can heal other pigs, but have weaker weapons and lower health gauges. Each career path is unique until they progress to the Special Commando class and finally, the Hero class. 
It costs more promotion points to promote each class as they are upgraded from 1 promotion point for the first upgrade to 8 promotion points to attain the hero rank. You think you'll be able to reach your goal of conquering the continent of Sostralasia without taking care to properly promote all your porkers to the highest possible rank of hero? In a pig's arse! Oh. That means, in order to rank up every team member to the hero rank, you'll need to bring home the bacon by finding every single promotion point in every single level along the way. Conditions for obtaining promotion points vary from level to level, but you obtain one promotion point for completing a mission, one for not losing any team members in battle, and a number of special points for meeting certain criteria depending on the mission. It can be slicker than a grease pig to obtain all the special bonus points, let alone the survival bonus considering how hard it is to keep all of your crew in one piece. Also, if you lose three little piggies, the first to die will go wee 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 all the way home. Lose four and the first two to die will go to hog heaven. Lose all five and you gotta redo the level. Any of your pigs that die permanently take their promotion points with them, and one of your reserve grunts will be put in their place. Then you'll really be sucking hind teeth, because you have to upgrade them from the ground pork up. Unfortunately, keeping all of your hogs above ground will be difficult, not only because of the relentless enemies, but also because you can easily be your own worst enemy in this game. In addition to friendly fire, there are environmental hazards such as water for the lower ranks, mines, falling long distances or hitting the ground really hard, being hit by a vehicle or landed on by a paratrooper, swimming in poisonous water, getting knocked off the map for an instant KO, or being near another exploding pig. Yes, the pigs don't just die, they burst from existence. Bleh, what a pigsty. On the plus side, there are also vehicles, stationary weapons, and building structures available to save your bacon. You can occupy tanks on land and water, pillboxes, heavy artillery, bunkers, or mash tents that actually heal you while you take cover. All of these structures also have their own health meter and can protect you from fire as long as they hold out, but be careful, pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered. If the enemy huffs and puffs and blows your house down, as soon as they are destroyed, they too will explode and injure the pig within. However, it's usually worth the risk to occupy these structures because they usually have a fairly high health bar and may also have exclusive powerful weapons that are sure to make your enemy squeal like a piggy. The gameplay seems very simple, like a golf game, but strategy becomes more and more important the further you get into the game. For example, why just shoot an enemy when you can shoot them into a mine? Why shoot an enemy then remain in plain sight and wait like a pig for Christmas just to be shot on the enemy's next turn when you can remain behind cover and attack with a long distance explosive? Oh, but be careful about attacking hero rank opponents with airstrikes or they'll go hog wild and pay back in kind. So, ixnay on the area Ike okay eh? That's pig lag. Other strategies apply to this game such as fighting from high ground for the advantage and remaining spread out to avoid being hogtied all at once. Although the game is largely about skill and strategy, chance and luck also come into play as you hope that your enemy dunces it or you get a lucky shot. Or both. There are 25 missions of increasing difficulty ending in an epic battle against the highest on the hog from each country and unless you're fully equipped and even if you are, it's really tough. To beat the last level properly, you'll have to use everything but the squeal. However, you can cheese the last level if you're a cheater, or pressed for time. There's no time. When you beat the game, you can play it through again as Team Lard, the unaffiliated purple team from the Isle of Swill. What advantage is there to playing as Team Lard? Well, you can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig, and that's the case with this team, but you can play the game through again on an increased difficulty where the enemies are even stronger. It could take you about 10 to 15 hours to beat the single player campaign, and it took me around 14 hours because of complications. But, endless hours of fun can be had making pork grinds of your friends in multiplayer mode. You can play deathmatch or survival maps with up to four players with use of the PlayStation Multitap. Multiplayer mode boasts zillions of levels to master. Well, I don't know if there are quite that many, but there sure are a lot, and some of them are tons of fun. To dig up worms again, Hogs of War takes a dig at worms. Oh, somebody's got beef. Or pork, or whatever. Uh, I guess I'll go eat worms. I am worm food! Though Hogs of War could easily be compared to Worms, I enjoy this game much more than the 3D version of Worms personally. The game is fun, but playing the game with a buddy is even more fun. Nerf. Yeah! My favorite multiplayer level would probably be Death Bowl, where you can hit your enemies with madness gas and make them go ham and run into a minefield or a pool of water at the bottom of the pit. The game is a bit deeper than it first appears, and it's a lot of fun overall, but it does have its ups and downs. For one thing, the AI kinda sucks, and it can be annoying to have to wait for the computer to walk around nonsensically, sometimes taking up their entire turn to decide what to do before finally doing nothing, and you can't skip it. Like I said, the characters' lines are funny at first, but it will begin to wear after a while, especially since you can't skip their animations either. Oh, this will moisten the underwear, sensei! 
The graphics are decent, but they aren't going to knock your socks off, and as the stages get more complex, the game is susceptible to occasional slowdown, sometimes to a crippling degree. If anything, I would say that this is the Achilles hoof of the game. There have been occasions where I've needed to pause the game to give it a chance to catch up, and there's also been times that my turn has just been ruined, but these instances were few and far between, and who knows, maybe it's just my own copy that does this. Sometimes the enemies appear to get confused and will suddenly pork chop mid-air, which is funny, but very odd and makes me wonder if it isn't just a bug. You asked for this. You're worthless as teats on a boar, aren't you? I enjoy it anyway, and I think the gameplay more than makes up for the shortcomings. There's nothing more satisfying than getting your enemy to fall into a landmine and lose their pig's feet with a well-placed attack. Turn-based battle has never been so fun. The thing you gotta understand about this game is that it's real fun. The music is fun and appropriate for the country that your enemy's team represents. The cheerful sounding war tunes are very fitting for this game, and it includes John Philip Sousa's Liberty Bell March as the game's main theme, which fits perfectly. Hogs of War was originally released on the PS and PC, but apparently the enemies don't walk in the PC version. Wow, that really changes the difficulty of the game. Would I ever play the PC version? When pigs fly? Oh. I forgot to mention that the enemy will occasionally move via jetpack to pick up weapons, so there's that. If you aren't entirely turned off by turn-based tactics games, I would highly recommend Hogs of War, but unfortunately this game is rather rare on the PlayStation and will run you about $50 complete or $35 loose. Me? Spend that much on a loose PlayStation game? In a pig's eye. Buying it online can be a pig in a poke, and if you don't want to break the piggy bank, it was released as a PS1 classic game on the North American PlayStation Store in 2013, so that would definitely be my recommendation if you're looking to try this game out for yourself without being a guinea pig. This game is a ton of fun to play, especially if you play it with another person in single player or multiplayer mode. But you don't have to take my word for it. Hello? Hey Andrew, it's Eric again. What's up? Hey, remember when we used to play Hogs of War? See, just like I said, play Hogs of War and you'll be as happy as a pig in sh**.